You know, Bear Grylls won't teach you this. This is how you fall out of an airplane. You find a crate with a parachute. Otherwise, you're never going to make it. The thing that we, I remember laughing about this is that these guys would still fight me rather than run out of a burning chateau. Um, but we just... Uh, and I remember there's, there's one part where Sully, we drop the thing and he starts walking across and it was Richard McGonagall walking on like a... Uh, yeah, this is the part right here. Uh, we, you drop this thing and you'll watch Sully walk across and it was so funny because it was just a piece of tape on the floor, not, obviously not a beam. And he started doing this silly little big arms. Like, it just looks, it looks great. It, he just, he looks so silly in the in the suit. He looked like he was like a drunken ape trying to get across this thing. And there's obviously no beam, so it was just him on that uh, on this silly little piece of tape. But uh, fun scene. Hardest thing about that is just you know they people they would always say, remember it's burning, and so you have to kind of keep duck down low when you're running around. Okay, well, the village, it was it was interesting. Again, this is one of those things where they just kind of let me riff as we walk through. There'll be a few lines. I just remember walking up and these people interacting with me and I, I, you know, it was just chickens jumping around and, and uh, you know, just, it was such an interesting, like, you know, where he walks up and waves. Does anyone speak English? Everybody speak English? It was, I literally got to say whatever I wanted. And, you know, and then the they walk up to this yak or whatever and touching him. I mean, I I just remember going, you really know? Here's the thing. That when we did this, there was more dirty stuff that you aren't allowed to hear. It comes out of my mouth. Um, a lot of chicken jokes. Um, uh, you know, things like, um, are you the town hooker? Horrible things that isn't T for teen. Um, deep down, I'm a terrible person. Um, no, but it was it was it was uh, it was fun to have a break from all that action. Just him walking around, and I, I remember there's like a little boy, and then we we got to to play with. Him. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm walking right through his. Hi. Is he, every time he walks up to one of the characters, you see him, he waves. So there's just this, always, I would do this goofy, hi. Uh, and he would touch, you know, he touches the yaks. And it, 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 it opened up a, a Pandora's box of dirty jokes uh, walking through this village that uh, nobody should have to hear. <laughs> uh, did this with the stuntman was holding me up, actually literally holding me up and threw me down on pads. And then obviously it cuts and goes down. And then, then this fight is actually a uh, uh, two two stunt guys doing the fight. So it cuts to them doing the fight, and then uh, the big. That's gotta hurt. Back up there, release it. Um, the interesting thing about this is uh, when all hell breaks loose, and this stuff is. Uh, oh. Love that. When this, when he does fall, does this, this whole thing, it's such an, just an epic part where he grabs onto this, this right there, all that moving around, everything you see him bouncing around in there was actually a stunt actor named Ruben Langdon that they actually put. I asked to be put on this wire uh, that they were going to put him on. Uh, and here's my my favorite part is that this guy is holding on by one hand, about to die, falling out of a plane, and he still wants to shoot me. That is commitment from your bad guys, folks. That is commitment. Um, no, but um, they had him up on a wire, and from one another wire would pull him side to side, and the other wire in the other corner pulled him up and down, and they would yank at the same time, and his body was flapping around for eight hours. They they did that to him. Um, so that scene and all those and, and if you remember, it's just a few moments, eight hours of, of footage they covered. Just, I can't imagine his forearms. It was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, but this is quite a climactic scene. And this is, um, you know, Bear Grylls won't teach you this. This is how you fall out of an airplane. You find a crate with a net parachute. 
Otherwise, you're, you're never going to make it. Interesting thing about this is when I got to work with J.J. Abrams, uh, we talked about uh, Uncharted. It's the reason he put me in Star Trek. A um, uh, little part in that, just for fun. And he, uh, he said the opening of Uncharted 2 was the best opening of game, television show, or movie he's ever seen. And he might have been lying, but uh, he did. He thought that whole opening where you wake up like that and you realize you're sideways with the snow going sideways. He said that was just absolute brilliant opening. And it really does. It sets the tone for the game, especially a, a game like this one where you're going back in the time timeline of what happened. Um, yeah, I, the only thing I can tell you remember about this is that where you're actually sitting there um, mo-capping it, we could have done it just sitting up straight up, but I, I, we actually ended up mo-capping it where I was actually on my back sideways with my feet up on blocks just so I could have that you can see the looseness in the head when I'm looking around oh that's my butt and then looking to your right and like imagining the snow coming down the side but it was nothing more than just an empty gray room um, we didn't you know you don't need much um, in terms of props in these kind of things um, one of my favorite examples of that is like the Drake's Fortune the first Uncharted we're in a Jeep. They brought in a real Jeep that we interacted with, jumped in, had a steering wheel and everything. Uncharted 2, we had, they made like, what looked like a wooden Jeep out of blocks and everything and the steering wheel and everything. Uncharted 3, it was a chair. It was two chairs. I mean, just got down because they realized we just literally take that signature of their and put them in uh, into these environments. Amazing. Was, yeah. But there was no train. The studio wasn't big enough. Yeah, that's great. This was actually, we did, and it's just a, it's, it's an empty, like a PVC pipe cage. But when I'm hitting this and holding my breath, they kept laughing because I would really hold my breath. I didn't have to, but I couldn't help it. It's something when you, but when they deal cut, I go, and it, like, they start, you're gonna pass out, but there's something about that when you're playing, when you're doing the imagination. You, I mean, think about when you're watching a movie and something like that. People have told me, I've told that story, people said, I, I held my breath when you did that. And like when, when you went under, the water came up, they found themselves playing a game going, just like, because you become so immersed in it. And uh, I, remember the, I remember this, I was hearing, hearing the sound, oh no, starting to run, and then that just a big, huge jump. And it, was, it was just a jump and then a, and a jump, a run and a jump. And then you obviously you pick it up after, but uh, yeah, the best thing was just um, at the beginning of that where you're under the water and you're pushing that thing off. You know, there's people helping you get it off, but I'm holding my breath. And what we did is try to move like you're in the water because I don't know, we, we couldn't really slow it down to make it look like it was in water. So it was more like just how would it be underwater? Making the face and everything. Uh, I remember I had a, a bicycle accident. I actually cracked uh, like my, uh, my ribs off my sternum. I kind of cracked my sternum. And we had to do that. And I was lying on my back trying to push that up and do it. And it just was so painful. So it wasn't too hard to fake the pain because it really hurt. But um, we, we overcame it. I haven't seen this in so long. It's so great. And it's probably possibly some of the best underwater stuff. Even the swimming at the beginning where it gets to that point. Um, you know the 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 underwater sequences. Water is very difficult to do uh, in games, and Naughty Dog just nails it.